G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome to more of what works. This is the F-14B, and it is an iterative improvement over the F-14A early, having better missiles, better uh, flares, and of course, a little bit of better engine performance. The F-14B is essentially just a slightly better version of the F-14A. It's iterative. It's pretty much exactly the same in terms of gameplay, but just better and there's not really much more to say about it. You could almost technically end the review here, but of course, I'd love to show you some awesome games and some awesome improvements, and of course, the way that the matchmaker has changed with the additions over the months. The F-14B really fits this matchmaker quite well. It's just something works with this plane. Eight missiles, really, really strong ones, decent radar, and perhaps some of the most variable flight performance of course coming from that variable geometry wing. The uh, F-14 has a really strong capability to fly both fast and slow, although not the fastest and not the slowest, but certainly somewhere in between that allows it a decent margin and the ability to decently accomplish both. You're obviously not going to be out turning an F-16 or a MiG-29 at low speeds, but you certainly won't be you know, having to sort of risk getting outrun by a Mirage 2000. These things are the classics of the middle ground planes. These don't particularly do well in any single thing, but they do okay in multiple things to be pretty much good enough across the board. And in War Thunder, that seems to be a really high achieving plane, a high achieving design, if you will. It tends to be that the uh, sort of good enough or the sort of middle of the road tends to work the best. Things like the BF-109s, uh, they tend to be pretty good. Things that just sort of do a little bit of everything just well enough to get by. And the F-14 is doing exactly that. You're able to dogfight a little bit. You're able to uh, stand off a little bit with those sort of long-ranged AIM-7Ms and of course the AIM-54Cs. This is the primary thing that the sort of F-14 is known for, at least uh, the one thing that it has above all the other planes in War Thunder, that it has those active radar homing missiles. And to be honest, I personally don't recommend using them in your gameplay, but that being said, other players will, and they will make a massive difference because essentially what they do is deny the whole of the high altitudes to you and to your team. And so you end up with this inability to really compete at 6,000, 8,000 meters, and that basically rules out any of those sort of top-down uh, missile attack gameplay styles, where you climb up high, dive down on your opponents, and rain missiles like hell. The J-8B is a really good example of a plane that thrives in that environment, uh, but it just can't really function in that because of the uh, likes of the F-14B and the M-54C. The M-54C it seems to be just slightly better, um, but at the same time, it is still just as effective. You can't really turn much against M54s, and a 20G missile at sort of thousands of meters of altitude is really going to make the difference against you compared to, say, sea level. And that's the, that's the bonus of the F-14. It just gets, like, area denial, and it forces your opponents to go down to the ground. And, and this is beneficial because it means that those planes can't make use of their, their sneaky tactics and uh, have to use their otherwise inferior missiles towards the ground, which sort of limits their usefulness. It means that the opponents can, can outturn them a little bit better. It means that they can use the sun a little bit more, like you can pitch up a little bit into your opponents um, or, or away from your opponents and, and have the sun facing you. Um, all of these things start to play into the F-14's favor. And it just so happens that the F-14 is able to exploit all of these very, very well, and it just works for the F-14. So, how do I play the F-14? Uh, quite simple, pretty much the same way that I play the Tornado. I skirt around the outside of the battlefield, try and pick off a couple of people on the flanks, and then go into the furball and try and kill enemies that are, you know, semi-distracted. Um, if they're heading towards me, I'm going to try and use the AIM-7. If they're heading away from me, I'm going to try and use the AIM-9. But at the end of the day, I'm just really going to try and you know, find the shoe that fits best for the plane, and even that is in a slightly unique flavor. This particular match here, I'm just going to go after, f like, enemies that are targeting friendly planes, 
It's really that simple. And honestly, that's the most beneficial way to play the game. Because whilst your enemy is uh, focused on the friendlies, you can pretty much go and do whatever the hell you want on these lovely little sort of F14Bs, F4Js, um, F16s, MiG-29s. It doesn't matter because if they're not using flares, it literally does not matter what they're going to do. So we're going to send off an AIM-9L and the AIM-9L is going to track nice and true simply because it uh, enemy goes straight to the ground. It, it's just a wonderful thing. You love, love to see it, uh, but at least we are going to try and get ourselves away from this verbal. We're going to go a couple of flares here. And flares, this thing has got a lot of them. So you can pretty much use them to your heart's content. And uh, there's there's real no, really no shame in using your flares to a ridiculous volume. Now, we've got a couple of uh, missiles left. We've got one 9L. And I'm going to hope to use it on this guy. I've used it on the bloody 9L that's fired at me. And it's absolutely useless. But that's okay because... This guy is going to go in for the turn. I've already spread the wings, and I'm basically just going to try and sit in behind him. There's nothing left for him, though, because he gets absolutely eaten alive by an R24R. And this F4J, there's not much for him either. The J7D, I've got so much engine power over, it's not even funny. Um, that MiG-21 just does not stand a single chance. He's going to have to, like, commit to a head-on, or he's going to have to find some weird funky business that I'm doing that just puts me in a really bad situation. Uh, like this MiG-23 here, who is going to probably launch something very, very cheeky. Um, I don't know how I got away with that. That was pure luck. Uh, let's just call it American bias, but maybe the AIM-7M saved my bacon. So, we're going to go head on again with the J7. Um, it's a bit of a stupid idea, let's be honest, because the J7D really only has one thing to do, and that is to go head on. So I'm going to pitch it up, make sure that the MiG-23 is uh, distracted, and I'm very confident that that MiG-21 is going to ditch himself. Uh, well, look, I, I was hoping that he was going to do something else, but you know what? It's good enough for me. It's, it's totally fine. I can live with that. And instead, we're going to go for this MiG-23, who's nice and distracted. He's got really, really low airspeed, and it looks like we're going to come in for the kill nice and easily. I've selected some weird form of pulse Doppler mode, uh, and I'm just deciding whether or not I should go for it. No, nah, I'm going to go guns, 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 fire away, and get an ace in the bag, just like that. And the F-14 is number one support fighter. So when your opponents are distracted like that, it is the most easy time you can possibly think of ever. There's like, you, you don't even need to win 1v1s, you don't need to sort of pick furballs, you don't even need to do area denial. You, you can just sort of sit on the, on the outskirts and do support fighting, and you'll find that you'll be extremely successful with the F-14B. You'll find that the types of fights that you get yourself into are very one-sided because you're just able to thin the numbers so damn quickly. Now, speaking of thinning the numbers, this uh, MiG here looking nice and juicy, getting himself donked by an AIM-7M. The F-4S is going to be the next victim here, and on we go. Basically what I want to do is run through as many enemies as I can, smash as many with an AIM-7, and then hopefully they lose enough energy to die to something else, pick up altitude, just like just like this guy, big blunder there, and that gives me kill number three with three missiles. Extremely impressive stuff, like you, you can really, really pull off high kill games with the F-14 simply because you have the missile capability, you have the performance, and of course you have the ability to just zoom on through the map and then pick a 1v1 when you really want to, as long as it's one-sided. Once again, you're not going to be outturning Mirage 2000s. You're really like not going to be outturning everything. Uh, MiG-29s, you can kiss your ass goodbye. But you know, a tornado or sort of a mid-speed dogfight, uh, you can you can definitely pull some things off where you otherwise might not be able to. Uh, MiG-23s, you'll probably be able to comfortably dogfight. Of course. I'm not saying that you're going to just win them every single time without any consequences, but you can definitely demonstrate that you have an upper hand. Now, upper hand here is rapidly depleting. We, we have no upper hand anymore. It's very rapidly becoming a uh, bit of a shit situation. I'm going to send a lovely 7M here into the MLU and then try and light up some opponents here. I've got that F-16 trailing me. I really need to be careful here. And it's pretty much all over. Once you get a numbers disadvantage like this in top tier jets, um, there's there's nothing left to do apart from just sit in the corner and cry. If you can make it back to base in time, then sure, that's great, but I don't really see myself doing that here 
because there's just not enough friendlies around to deal with the numerous amounts of enemies. And um, yeah, I, I come out of this completely unscathed and clutch for a 10 versus 1, but I, I didn't record it because Shadowplay crashed. So um, yeah, you can totally believe me on that. And we're going to move on to the next and final match. Again, we're on that sort of big Sinai map, the Suez Canal map, and we are pretty much doing the same, uh, but I'm going to take a little bit more of a bold approach here. We're going to go straight in to sort of pick off whatever I think might be a little bit juicy. Uh, that F-16 is looking a little juicy, but I'm quickly realizing this is a bad idea. And this is the kind of thing that you might want to not do in uh, top tier. You might not want to just go headlong into your opponents. You've got to have, you're going to have to pick off like 2v2s at the very most and situations that are really working in your favor. Otherwise, you're just going to end up like I did last match and just like 1v a million and there's not really much that you can do. The MiG-29s are faster than you. The F-16s, I believe, are faster than you. Uh, the Mirages are just a little bit slower, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you have to start turning for missiles, you're going to be slower than all of them anyway. And so you could just kiss your ass goodbye. So it's really important to maintain that numbers advantage and to pick fights that you're, you are very confident that you're going to win. Now, this F-14, I was uh, very confident that I was going to win against him. The Kornas is uh, pretty much going to go bye-bye as long as he doesn't pick up any, any funky speed or do any funky business there. And the F-16 is our next happy customer. The Kornas 2000 decides to go bye-bye. And the uh, F-16 goes up in altitude, which is actually really bad. You, you, if you're going to do stuff like that, stick close to the ground because the radar is going to not be quite as accurate and it's going to be more likely to just donk into the ground, which is exactly what you want. Now, exactly what you don't want is this F-14 coming in right behind me. He's done a little bit of a sneaky and he's sent a missile away, but it looks like he might be focused on someone else. That allows me to launch a 9L, but I'm just a little too ambitious on that 9L and it doesn't quite land home. Now, this means that we're able to roll around. We're going to uh, look for another juicy target. That MiG-29 looks like he's going down, so no more for you. But maybe the Kfir. Maybe the Kfir is going to look some, uh, some, some nice juicy, juicy stuff. AIM-7M is going to come in. Just as he starts to notch, it's pretty much not going to work. If he's, if he's notching, you can just kiss it bye-bye. I'm going to send a 9L because I can't be bothered, and that is a done deal on the Kfir. I'm pretty sure he might have been damaged now that I think about it in retrospect. Um, so it might have been a bit of a kill steal. I'm sorry, but um, uh, uh, like if I could give back the kill, I would. But here we are. Anyway, uh, we're pretty much done. This is pretty much it. In a match like this, it all happens so quickly. And the F-14B is the king of the furball. It's pretty much the way you dogfight in a massive furball. You just take an F-14 and you will win. Any other plane, you're going to need 2v2s, 4v4s, 1v1s, etc. And it's really just going to be much more tough. Simply because the planes are not designed to maintain their speed in turns. They're not meant to be as forgiving. And the F-14 is a little bit handholdy. But you know what? That's fine because this plane doesn't have the top speed of the other planes. It doesn't have the ability to climb to 9,000 meters in like 20 seconds like half the other planes at top tier. Uh, of course, that's an exaggeration. Please don't don't ruin me in the comments. It's it's, it's an exaggeration, All right, please. But um, at the end of the day, this plane doesn't have any absolute class leading traits apart from its ability to zoom around the battlefield and launch eight very powerful missiles at its opponents at a good speed. And of course, it comes with that area denial capability of the AIM 54s. And when you think about that, you think about the countermeasures, you think about the powerful radar, this plane is formidable. It's just as formidable as the F-14A was when it was first introduced into the game. And it's really up there now with all of the other planes that have this large amount of engine power to compete. And it's cool because we have multiple planes at a very even battlefield. And I like this. It's very, very good. It's good for the matchmaker. It's good for top tier. And in general, it's good for the player base because there's not a silver bullet. If you get bored playing the F-16, you can go and play this. Or you can go and play the MiG-29. Or you can go and play the Vigan. Or you can go and play whatever the hell you want because pretty much everything is competitive to some degree. 
The Nets is a really good sneaky boy. The MiG-29 is best-in-class dogfighter, 1v1. Um, video on that soon, perhaps. Um, the, there are plenty of other planes. Like, the Mirage has a, has a niche. The F-16 has a niche. Hell, even the Phantoms have a niche. It's, it's good. It's really, really healthy for the matchmaker to have something like this. Just to, just to really spice things up. And just to add a whole bunch of variety that you otherwise wouldn't ever get. Speaking of variety... We're going to dust off this guy with a bit of guns, guns, guns. That's kill number six. It just rounds out the plane for me. The F-14B is probably the best fighter of this patch. I would probably put it above the MiG-29. I would probably put it above the Nets. And I would probably put it above the F-16s. But ladies and gentlemen, that's just my opinion. And that's all I have time for today. I hope you enjoyed if you'd like to support the channel, links are in the description below, particularly that decal helps out the channel a lot. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.